All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here for another episode of Sea Mask with my dudes, Will, Tim, Nick. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. It's always a pleasure. I figured today I get I get DMs and messages about this topic all the time. No matter how much content I produce around dating and courtship, and we'll talk about how cringe the term courtship is here in a second. And so many guys, specifically within the Catholic Masculinity Project, uh, the group that I run, are really wondering what the CMAS crew has to say about dating. The roadmaps from first date to you know being a couple, being engaged, married, and so forth. What does that look like? What things are licit or illicit in terms of what you should do or what you could do in the context of dating or you know courtship? And how uh, that leads up to marriage and all the tough conversations one should have. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. There's been some stuff in the group, too, that I've just laughed at, like laundry lists of questions that I think would terrify any woman. And so I I personally don't want these guys to be alone for the rest of their lives because they're acting like Spurgs about it. I love you, dudes. But let's just <laughs> let's deliver some hard truths about dating and courtship, starting with, well, let's just let's start here. What do you guys think about that term courtship versus the term dating? I know, Will, we were we were just talking about this. So I'll pass it to you. Yeah, I I don't know what courtship is. That's, to start with, it, when people use that word, I straight away think, why are you calling it that rather than dating? It means so many different things to different people. For some people, it just means like dating with tweed on, right? And that's one angle that they come at it from. Um, for others, it means something like you're dating, but you aren't going to have sex before you get married. And that's just how dating should be until it got destroyed during the sexual revolution and turned feminist. Now, for others, it's probably like you're dating, but you're thinking really carefully about whether this woman is marriage material. Like then it becomes courtship. Again, that's just what dating should be. So I'd like to know from the person using the word courtship, what do you mean by it? Uh, I hope it's a good thing. All those things I've just listed taking the woman seriously, taking yourself seriously as a man, thinking about this whole experience with her, with marriage in mind, I would just call it dating. Just relax about it. And I think immediately that takes the mental pressure off some of these people. As if there's a, a rule book that you have to follow, because that's one of the main things that I think can actually kill it. If you've constantly got this big checklist of stuff in mind about exactly how you're supposed to behave, it's one of the probably the quickest way to destroy the kind of energy that the woman's going to feel around you that you want her to actually feel, which is relaxed and confident. That's in incredibly, incredibly well said. Uh, we'll pass it to you, Nick. I don't have honestly much more to add from what Will just said beyond that. I think the, the use of the word courtship is an attempt at, it, uh, imposing morality on the situation, which is obviously a good thing. Um, but that's not achieved through nomenclature. So yep. you don't, you don't have to call it something different to be a virtuous person within romantic relationships. And Tim. Yeah, I don't know. Don't have much to add. I think those are great answers. It's just, usually a, a LARP term used to express something um, affirmative about the premarital rapport between a man and a woman. And it ends up like all LARPs just being an expression of the way we never were. Courtship is, is how dating was before, you know, the crack in society grew. Fine. Like we get it, but um, just go back to dating. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way that I feel about um, Catholics that were raised in our era and refer to the third person of the Holy Trinity as the Holy Ghost. It's kind of like, yeah, I, it's a cooler term. And I sort of wish that I had grown up before the council when they changed it to the Holy Spirit. It's a, it's a fruitier term. Maybe courtship is a cooler, more accurate term than dating, but we were raised with it. I Like Nick says, you don't, rearrange the morality or <clears throat> um, put the morality at front and center just by going back to an old term from the days that were allegedly better. Yeah. I'm just looking up here. 
etymologically where it comes from. And it's to do with the behavior of a courtier. Now, you're not a dude hanging out in a court trying to woo a woman in the way a courtier did. So I don't see why you need to use that term. It's already bringing in that LARP mentality that Tim's just described aptly. By the 1830s, this dictionary says, it was used of a period during which a couple mutually develops a romantic relationship with a view to marriage. And that's pretty much what we call dating now. So I don't think the word serves a useful purpose. That's my probably uh, upsetting take to a lot of trads. You don't need to talk about courting. And if you say to a woman, um, how would you like it if I were to court you? And uh, that will probably fall flat. So just don't bother. How would you like it if I were to suddenly begin to courting you? <laughs> courting you in the elbow. They're like, excuse me. <laughs> uh, it's like asking her permission to kiss her. May, may I kiss you, my lady? I was She's going to be really receptive. I was just talking about this in all the first Adam Sandler movies. Um, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Big Daddy. He always, it, it's like lame. He he knows he's a lame. That's that's part of the premise of all those movies. It stuck out because it was the only element of romantic comedy in like the 90s when a guy would do the improv with a ridiculous thing and ask a lady to kiss her. You got to use the electricity in the air, you know. Now, the feminists have turned like force rape culture into um, conditions for the possibility of requiring or I guess requiring that men do that. But it, it, yeah, you, if you, you are losing, if you ever ask or have asked a girl, may I kiss you? That's not how it works, guys. You yeah. Can at least it, yeah. Go there ahead. was a, uh, an instance where I, I kissed a girl on a cheek in like a friendly way after a dance and a day later got a arm's length text about how that was, just the most egregious thing I could have done to her and and how there was no permission granted uh, she was horrified and so yeah the, and the feminism I think obviously inspired that sort of thing um, but perhaps I also wasn't fe correctly feeling the electricity in the air when I did that <laughs> <laughs> well, also, it was a cheek kiss, so there's not really any electricity to speak of. You know, it's just it. It doesn't. You can't rape someone by kissing them in the cheek, nor can you feel electricity before you're like, nah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just tell her to pound sand. <laughs> I I like that idea of electricity in the air because if you have to like announce that the courting is happening. Or she has to be like, uh, has it started yet? Uh, it, is the is is the courting ongoing right now? Uh, she should just feel it. You don't need to make a big deal of it. This yeah. is the thing. This is where <clears throat> I think some guys actually have to look at the red pill and say, I'm actually going to see what they say about this. Take all the degenerate stuff aside. This is where they get a lot of this diagnostics correct. So what is creepy to... How a woman perceives creepy is in direct proportion to how attractive she is to you. Attracted she is to you. Brad right. Pitt could walk up to a random woman with a bouquet of flowers and she'll be swooning. That was the most charming thing anybody's ever done. But if some incel type guy did the same thing, she'd be calling uh, the police. So not, you know, and Nick. So if that woman was like on fire for you, that cheek kiss would have been like the coolest thing anybody could have ever done. Yeah, this is what been my experience. It's like in direct proportion. How attracted is she to you? Because even the feminists like women, women don't want you to ask for permission to kiss them. They just want you to be the right kind of guy that they're attracted to. That's it. Wait, Mike, you mean all those Fabio type novels where the guy just swoops her off her feet and kisses her without asking her, her pronouns like women actually like reading that stuff. It's not all fake. <laughs> It's it's not all fake and G-A-Y, guys. That is actually the truth. They uh, will break the rules for guys they're attracted to. And here's another thing about the announcement of courtship, courtship will. It's such a great point. It's like, should I ask her to be my girlfriend? It's like, okay, guys. A woman that's really into you 
we can get into the biological, physiological reasons as to why this happens, the emotional reasons as, as to why this happens. Unless she's like a really worldly, scan, you know, scandalous type of woman, she's really into you. She, no other man's going to exist but you. Yeah. yeah. She's just going to be just that's it's just going to be you, guy. So don't ask her like a Spurg. Just tell her like, yeah, you're you're my woman now. That's going to go. A lot better than my lady taking off the top hat and the tweed jacket, placing it on the floor so she doesn't step in a puddle. Would you like to continue courting? It's like, okay, so are you going to hold her hand on the inside too? Is that how we're doing? That's how we're setting the dynamic here, guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so this distinction between courtship and dating, even just saying courtship versus dating, like my butthole puckers a little bit. I feel a little bit of pressure when I say courtship. I'm like, what is that? Like Do an I have to like station? <laughs> like with yeah. Glee? <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's part partly. Do I have to have a... Like well, a well, well, well. Pipe? Be honest, bro. Be honest. Nick told me after he visited you at your house, that library is filled... Behind you is filled with Fabio novels. <laughs> <laughs> you're reading those this things. This is where... <laughs> We think this it's is where that's how I learn about women. That's how I learn everything I know about women. Women's <laughs> romance. I told you that shades. in confidence, Tim. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have. Done. Will Sorry. that tweet you made Sorry, about buddy. the Nala eyes is one of the greatest tweets I've ever seen. That's Let's see if we can maybe link, link to it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to quote it and just totally butcher it, but it was really good. If you guys don't follow follow Be Her Leader on X, you guys got to go do that immediately. It's it a, turns out it's Will. Yeah, <laughs> surprise. Um, I don't know what tweet you're talking about. Could you at least uh, uh, butcher I, it? We, I was talking about taking my wife out for dinner and then just making a cheeky joke, saying if I could go back in time and do it all again. You know, three kids under three by his twenty three, seven kids now, all the rest of it. Um, I, I would love to. I just gave her a smile with what I called uh, predator eyes. And then got Nala eyes back. And if you know the Lion King, when Simba flips Nala and the moment when they fall in love and her eyes go wide, the pupils dilate, um, which is, if you want to get boring and technical about it, to do with oxytocin, the love hormone. It just shows you that a lot of the communication should be nonverbal. It's another point about the electricity in the air that Tim was mentioning. Like if you get yeah. that look, if you see that look, then the courting has already started. You don't need to announce it. Yeah. You just need to continue and not screw it up. So, okay. I know so many guys are going to ask because I know a lot of guys want to get handheld, but let's not belabor this point too much because we've talked about matchmaking. We've talked about apps before, but before we even get into, okay, well, I need to find a woman in the first place. You're like, I get it. I get it, bro. My thing here is uh, there's going to be women in your immediate locale that you're going to be able to ask out. And let's say in the event that there isn't whatever, use a service like return. Uh, you know, uh, Tim, you answered this question from a, a friend of ours, a Taylor in that, in that chat last week. And you're like, well, we shouldn't be going to the apps if we don't have to, obviously, if we have something like return or if we have somebody in person at our church or whatever, um, but they can be useful. So just real quick, where do we find such women? I mean, wh where do we find it in return? Just from oh. from all Tim, over where do you the, where do you find your ladies, Tim? <laughs> um, <laughs> all over the U.S. of A., man, and I mean the English speaking world. There, there are good ladies. Um, they're just kind of hidden, but they're they're sp sprinkled magically with pixie dust all throughout every major metropolitan area in the U.S. of A. They're just you know. They're not, they're not public. They're not public hoes. So uh, by definition, so you, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be on the watch. And that's the other thing you gotta be ready to spring at a moment's notice. I don't know Lion King very well. I don't know the reference, but I do know you gotta be cat like ready to always um, ask, ask a, an eligible bachelorette out because you might be out with your parents. You might be out with your grandparents. Hell, you might be out with your great grandparents um, at the mall or something, getting them a, a soft yogurt and you might see a, a beautiful lady and you have to be ready to spring. That's my, uh, catamount reference of the day. So you gotta be ready. Do you guys know that really scary stat about 
how 45% of men aged 18 to 25 have never approached a woman in person. 45% never no. approached a woman in person. 29% have said they never approached a woman in person for a date. Okay, so 45 just never approached a woman in person at all for any reason whatsoever. And then 29% have never walked up to one and just asked her out on a date. That's crazy. I've never seen it. Now, I, I get it because we live in this post-sexual revolution sort of wasteland. Guys are afraid of getting caught with the Me Too. So I, I, there's a level of sympathy that I have <clears throat> for guys. But then past a certain point, it's like you have to understand and because of the social media age that we live in right now, how much of an advantage you're operating from if you can approach a woman. If you can just walk up to a woman deadpan and just say, hey, listen, you don't mean to bother you, uh, but I think you're beautiful. I want to take you out. You just drop that line. Just something so simple. Yeah. W women would fall over themselves and not know what to do with themselves. Or you just get a no and you go on your way and you lick your wounds for a little bit and you just move on. You're operating at an advantage because most women, especially most beautiful women, do not get approached. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. It shows you've got balls and confidence to do it. And that's an attractive trait in a man. Probably one of the top three or four things that women are going to look for. Bit of motivation, discipline, focus, confidence, sense of humor as well. All these things are way up there in what they look for in a man psychologically. So having the confidence and the charisma to just go with that approach, I think it already puts you ahead of, well, we've already seen um, plenty of men who would never dare to do that. So that's great advice, Mike. And you can start, if you're someone who's just terrified of this, maybe it's me too, like Mike mentioned. My hunch is, though, that more often it's just pride. Like you have such yeah. a high opinion of yourself that you don't want to get rejected or you're embarrassed at the idea of fumbling it and not coming off as cool as you want. Just get over yourself. Do it 10 times. Do it 20 times and just get better as, as you go. And when I was when I was 18, 19, if I saw a girl down at like the movie theater that I thought was cute, I would trip all the way down the steps like fake trip. And I would aim for her like popcorn or drink. I would try to knock it over, or at least fall in front of her. And it was like the world's worst acting because whatever. But it worked, you know, because they know. It's funny. <laughs> you know, so, like, that's this... so Tom Sawyer, like when the girl like walks by and he starts like doing backflips <laughs> and like cartwheels by her. Except you're supposed <laughs> yeah. to be tripping and, and obviously not tripping because I would lose momentum sometimes and then start again. <laughs> And like John Wick falling is, down the stairs. Yeah, it's falling more like, oh no. And, and the point is, it's a demonstration of confidence. That See, that's what all these guys that write me don't get. And that write Will and Mike and Nick at return just don't get. It's They're not turned on by the same thing. Like, they're not like, oh, look at the curves in that guy's calves. That's what, that's what gay dudes do. Um, girls aren't like scoping out guys. They, they don't want a guy to look like, you know, a snaggle tooth or some heinous monster. Like you should be fit, but they're looking for confidence. That's the aphrodisiac. And Mike, it, it can't, it can't be like ironic confidence. Like you're so goofy looking or weak or so fat that, that like your confidence is an anomaly or misplaced, like a historical uh, question mark. It's yeah. just gotta be, you, you know, you're, you're handsome enough looking to carry off whatever amount of confidence that you're exuding, uh, you're exercising. And then like the more, the better. So the stupid, I mean, anything, come up with your own thing to talk to girls. That's just what you're supposed to be crafting from 15, 16, 17. It's, it's silly at first. And then it can remain silly in my case, because I did that a lot and it worked a lot. But, yeah. Um, the point is, it's all about confidence. Guys don't understand. Girls are not gay men. They're not look. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. I'm told they're not looking at you the same way. They just they just want a big, a big, strong, confident, relatively funny, like mate. That's what they're sexually attracted to. Because most of them are very anxious. Like women aren't confident most of the time. And when a man's confident, they like that. I was once when I 
back in the the long distant past when I was a school teacher, I was at a track meet with a group of teenage boys and we were on this grassy slope watching the events. And there was a group of girls about 10, 15 meters below on the slope. And the, these boys were all talking about wanting to go over there and strike up a conversation. And they'd been doing it for about half an hour, making no progress. And I just told one of them, hey, why don't you just get into a position like you're just leaning on your side, on your elbow like this, and just slide down the slope and then just <laughs> end up right amongst them. And he was like, I can't do that, sir. There's no way I can do this. I was just, just trust me, it'll be hilarious. Just slide down the hill and don't move. Just wait there like this till they notice you. So we did it. And then they all laughed their heads off and he ended up hanging out there for about an hour, just talking to them, <laughs> making friends, getting some numbers. <laughs> Similar tactic to what Tim was talking about, which is tripping down the steps. Chad, that's a Chad move right there. And that's funny when you were talking about that, Tim, you know, and them not being gay men you get into the gym and you start working out because you think it's going to attract women when all you're attracting is more men and dudes <laughs> talking to you in the urinal. That's what comes from it. Stop, Mike. Stop DMing me pictures of your calves then. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Mike's a home to that. We weren't supposed to talk. He's to DMing talk you pictures of growing. his baby. I've been working on that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what calves, first of all, is what I should be saying. <laughs> You didn't give me that uh, part of the genetic pool, uh, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. No, no, I, I had I had nothing. It was just so guffawing. this is something that this yeah this next point I think because me and you uh, talked about this, uh, Nick, when we were, you know we were in person here. Um, the gluttony of particularity. But before we get to that point, real quick, I think what a lot of guys are fearful of or they're not aware of is okay. So where do you actually? And this is what's so great about return where the guys have to rate themselves. Mm -hmm. And you guys have said before that guys often don't accurately rate themselves. Now, I'm not trying to beat down on guys that are not as attractive. There's many things we can do to sort of elevate our status and, and our physiques and whatnot and you know, make us more handsome, so to speak. But you got to go for women that are on your level. And I don't think that's really spoken about much in you know, pickup circles or dating circles. It's like, dude, like if, you're, if we're being real, and I'm not just trying to be a dick, if you're a five and you're going for a nine, it's probably not going to work. So but yeah, I'm I mean, curious about. To, go ahead. I would. That's what I meant about. Um, you know, you, if, if you're approaching women within your assortative pairing, like orb, then then confidence is all that matters. If you're a five going for a nine or a three going for a nine, it just becomes ironic and and like sort of mashup of comedy and tragedy. Go ahead, Nick. There, there's just factors that guys, um can leverage that women can't like guys don't care as much if like a girl's funny because as chris hitchens yeah. says like women aren't and can't be funny um but they you know let's say they're they're witty and clever and and make you laugh or you guys get along like that's important but to a woman i think that's a lot more important um i'm i'm thinking of a friend of mine who's uh we'll just say not in brad pitt fight club shape qu quite the converse and he's one of the most aura filled guys I've ever been around. He'll command a room. All the girls will be hanging off his every word. They're laughing. They're asking him questions. They just want to be next to him. And he's not in shape at all whatsoever. Um, and so I think harder, the harder thing to do after you have like watched the pickup artist YouTube video and figured out the NLP script to like get the woman to not walk away. You know, like you positioned your body at the correct 40 degree angle. You, you leaned in such a way that she knows that you're leaving, but you also wanted to say something. You complimented her, but you didn't make her feel uncomfortable. And then you, you, you effectively created a time constraint. So she knew that this conversation wasn't going to last a long time. And then you hypnotized her into saying the 10 digits of her phone number. Cool. You, you did that. If you don't have anything else, you're screwed. And so I, I don't really think like the how is super important. Like there's a lot of ways to achieve the same thing. 
Um, it's just whatever you follow it up with, like you got, like Tim said, you got to have confidence. You got to be able to be able to exude fun. Um, when I flew my fiance out to spend four days with me the first time uh, here in Mississippi, I told her because she's, she's well-educated and in philosophy, she's actually taken more formal philosophy education classes than I have. Um, and I could sort of see this coming because it's, it's happened before in dating experiences where you just hide behind like talking about ideas. And so I told her, I was like, I don't want to talk philosophy or ideology with you at all over the four days that you're here. She's like, why? I was like, because I don't, it's so easy to hide from the really um, courageous thing, which is like getting to know each other and seeing like, is there, is there chemistry here when you can just spend all the time, like talking about politics and religion and, and philosophy and stuff like that. So um, guys have the ability to leverage things beyond their physical appearance and it would behoove them to be abundantly confident, very fun, very interesting, be able to make a woman laugh. Um, and then, yeah, like be, be in, in as good of shape as you can while doing that was, but that's not the limiting reagent. Actually, your physique is not the limiting reagent in, in, uh, chemistry. And be a dude that's fired up about something. <clears throat> be a dude that's fired up about life. You know, I think that that always translates well. A guy that's got some passion, some zest for his life. He knows where he's going, knows what he wants. Um, you know, is is sp sp uh, particularly studied on a, on a certain topic. You can kind of intellectually dominate her in these these, these specific areas. That stuff is important too. Um, and so, not to again dwell on that point too too long, because I know guys want to get into the nitty gritty of. Okay, so now we've got we found the woman. Okay, we used return or we approached somebody. Praise God. Dating leading up to marriage. So let's start with difficult conversations. And I think this is where guys again get tripped up because they think it's got to be a laundry list. My opinion is what is her what is her relationship like with the Lord? What does her prayer life look like? Does she go to mass, et cetera, et cetera? Also, it doesn't matter if she's not Catholic. You can just convert her. Guys get way too trip, tripped up on that. And what's her ideal future look like? He, listen to her words. Does she want to be a wife, mother, homemaker? Is she a boss babe? Is she a career woman? Uh, I think those three or four questions that I just laid out will kind of tell you a lot instead of saying, like, what do you think about patriarchy? And what do you think about feminism? And what do you think? I just think it becomes like a kind of a job interview that robs, saps the passion out of the air. So uh, are there questions that people should ask, men should ask early on? Um, or do you think kind of keeping it simple is best? We'll start with it's you, Will. Really, it's really important that you begin every date talking to the woman about who really runs the world. You have to do that. If she doesn't yeah. understand the deep intricacies of United States foreign policy in the last 6,000 years of mm. influence of who's really pulling the strings, walk away, dude. That's not the one. Yeah. True. If she hasn't True. read the complete works of E. Michael Jones, then it's a massive <laughs> red flag. <laughs> you can't you can't get to day two. Seriously though, people are gonna want to know what the script is, um, how to deal with it when she tells you that her 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 black baby daddy is in prison for two more years. What do you say? What do you come up with? How do you play the next two years? How do you play the two years after that? It's a whole, it's a whole, no, I mean, I think the important thing that guys need to know for the first three or four dates is, um, sorry, a baby in the next room. I'm presuming one of mine uh, is having a conniption is to be cool. You have to be cool. And that doesn't mean you, you do sleazy things, but you do have to, again, what women are attract. all women want the bad boy that'll be good for them. And all men want the good girl that'll be bad for them. Um, best probably yeah. um, equipoise to take into any single new dating courtship scenario. So um, with that in mind, you don't want to lie. You don't want to tell you you're a race car driver or an astronaut or whatever, because that's not true. Unless you're a race car driver or an astronaut, an astronaut. but you do what you do want to do is make sure that you're, you're cool. And the coolest version of yourself 
the most PG-13, maybe R with limited nudity, nudity version of yourself um, or no nudity with a uh, version of yourself, but you're not lying. Um, and then focus on those other questions after like, you know, do you want to have 12 or 18 kids or whatever that, that these, a lot of these more, more trad guys are just jumping into. They're like, okay, I have a checklist here. And they're like, push the glasses up to the top of the nose and they just get right down to it. And the key theme that keeps recurring that you've already seen is there's no sexual electricity to borrow one of Steve Harrington's terms as he tutors uh, young, young Dustin in Stranger Things. The, the sexual electricity is like the magic of life. It's literally the magic of life. It's what makes babies. So um, there is a Christian version of it, and it's not really different from the natural law version of sexual electricity. You just don't copulate until you're married. That, that, that's really the only difference. But you should be cool. You should be a PG-13 character, not this general audience's guy. And you should not have a list of questions involving does what which farm equipment does she know how to use uh how how many diapers can she change per hour you know how many how many chicken eggs can she um uh, get out of a snatch per 15 minutes or how many of your babies does she plan on having how many dozens of babies that's just not cool and yeah. the first rule of school is be cool sorry so many people would just benefit from reading a basic social skills book, like how to make friends and influence people. Like that would be a really good guide for basic dating for people who are confused about this stuff. Ask her questions that let her talk about herself and her life so that you can get to know her better and keep it fun and lighthearted. Like what's the favorite uh, place you've been on a holiday? What's the weirdest dream you've ever had? What's your um, favorite attribute about your best friend stuff like that things that make up a big part of her daily life and her memories and then if you listen to someone talk about stuff they're passionate about you'll learn about them anyway you don't need yeah. to ask her these technical abstract questions and even if you do and you get answers you don't like for example oh i don't believe in submission or no i would never want kids she might say that but if that electricity is strong enough like tim's describing then her mind's going to change because it will follow her heart anyway a strong man can lead a woman out of feminism sorry nick you're going to say something <clears throat> yeah comedian sam hyde uh has a great video on relationship expectations and he says if you're looking for a partner that perfectly lines up with your ideals that's not a woman that's a man with asperger's and the the point is is that like you as a guy are going to have interests that are going to almost never overlap with hers especially if like you're an interesting guy she might find them interesting she should find them interesting she should find what you find interesting interesting um i think that's really important as well if she regards what you are passionate about as interesting, not necessarily that she gets passionate about it, especially if you're, I don't know, like maybe you're genuinely interested in like electrical engineering, but you're a cool guy and like, you're like, yeah, I, I want to do this. I want to do this really well. And I want to do this for the rest of my life, but you're really interested in it. She'll just be like stoked that you're a guy who's like cares about something and is good at it and pursues it. She doesn't necessarily have to, I mean, I, you, you should hope as the guy that this woman is not interested in electrical engineering. You should hope like that's reserved for other men. So um, the, yeah, the gluttony of particularity, Mike, and then also some pride stuff. Um, she should have curiosity and, openness to the stuff that you're passionate about but if you're waiting for her to be have read or listen to the podcasts that you have or like believe the weird intricacies about the world that you believe um you're just you should just stay on twitter and like hang out with other dudes do you mean um i don't know uh i'm i'm, I'm asking i'm interrogating sam hyde via the medium of nick stumphauser but do you think he means like values or interests? Because yeah, like guys and girls have no, he's, he's very few interests. Yeah, interests. Yeah, because values that, should be values also should like be. 
No, value should be 100%. The I'm yeah. unfortunately didn't like re deliver his line from the video like well, but everyone should look it up. It's it's called Sam Hyde, a discussion on relationships and expectations. It's a very short little thing where he's 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 joking about how guys are. It's, that's why I led. Hopefully, everybody understood my joke. Like, no, she doesn't need to know who runs the world and the intricacies of like historical evils. And if that's what you're like expecting her, you should you should agree on what's evil to Tim's point. But she doesn't need to know like the complete works of E. Michael Jones. If you're finding that in a woman, like she's probably a federal agent. In an ideal world, a lot of these women, a lot of these men would would in this they, they picture a woman showing up veiled in like a flowery outfit. She just came from like skipping through the flowers. She was just waiting for you, and then she sits down. And she says, "I have read the case for patriarchy, and especially ask your husband." I love Tim and Steph Gordon's work. I would like to submit to you, my dear patriarch, and I will do everything that you tell me to do and to say, can we court now? Like, that's how it comes across sometimes. I'm like, guys, like, this is on you. The electricity thing is such a good point. And then going back to, okay, first date, uh, it also matters how you guys got to that first date. So <laughs> to give you an example, my wife and I are already kind of talking a bunch before we went on our first date and so naturally these conversations flowed because we had some rapport so it was just back and forth just an extension of the conversations we were already having well, a lot of guys if you're just picking up a, a, a chick that you saw at the library you know it might be awkward at first but you know i don't think coming with a laundry list of questions is going to be very helpful for you um and when in doubt speak less ask more and then eventually these qu questions that you have are going to be answered it's going to be pretty obvious um where she just stands on these topics just to brag, Mike, what you described was like 70% of what actually happened to me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's amazing. That, that's uh, actually amazing. My fiance had been a big fan of Tim and Steph, had watched C-Mask, had uh, read the case. For, I think she read the case for patriarchy, was just very cognizant and was v very interested in, in finding a relationship like that. Now, I could have bungled it if what she, what she wanted i couldn't provide in terms of that dynamic um but so, being the resident zoomer here i have a slightly different perspective on like how people should approach the 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 connection like actually finding somebody and it's also very easy i think for people to be biased um after they've had some kind of success whether it's like you know, a long-term relationship where you end up getting married to the person. They're like, well, all you have to do is literally exactly what I did. It's like, okay, every situation is very different. Like the reason why I started the matchmaking thing was that I did recognize that specifically my generation had like a unique problem here, which was that the more virtuous and engaged they became with like the spiritual life, the fewer and fewer options there were in their proximity. It's like, okay, can we select for this? And then having worked with Tim and Will on it. It's like, oh shoot, we also have to select for coolness and like confidence and being like a real person. You can't just select for um, religion or ideology. Like, you, and and that that nuance I think is what makes not to do a shameless plug, but shameless plug. That is what makes us by return very unique and like work. We just got our fifth uh, engagement. Um. It works because we select for more than just that those superficial attributes, which is why I was saying, like, no matter how it happens, if you can't follow it up with something good, like it's not gonna work. You can you can memorize the script or you can have the, the boxes checked. Um and we just uh we just watched the finished watching the invention of lying last night. It's Ricky Gervais, Rob Lowe, and Jennifer Gardner. Ricky Gervais, he's he's a bit you know, he's overweight. Um doesn't have a chiseled jaw. And then you have Rob Lowe, who's sort of like his antagonist, you know, blue eyes, chiseled jaw, uh, salt and pepper hair. And the whole premise of the film is that Jennifer Gardner, this, this beautiful woman has to pick between the two of them. And she's like, well, I want to have like good offspring. I want my kids to be beautiful and have a great start in life. And, but she's not even remotely happy with spending any length of time whatsoever with Rob Lowe's character. And she's always happy and laughing and seeing the world in a different way with uh, Ricky Gervais, who never lies to her. 
if anybody's familiar with the movie. Um, so however it happens, if you can't follow it up with something sincere, then it's going to fall apart. And the, the state of the world as it is today, I think it would, it would help young guys, Gen Z, um, to, you don't have to be famous. Like I'm not, um, but if you cultivate sort of in your immediate vicinity, excellence that you just have to be a local maximum. You don't have to be the maximum of all maximums. You have to be a local maximum. And then I would recommend that you be a local maximum in the areas that you value. And the issue with, I think, trad guys trying to become the local maximum in tradiness is it doesn't translate to any kind of interpersonal chemistry. Yep. You being like a really good trad well, and having all these consecrations and practices and going to the TLM and all this stuff, that local maximum doesn't translate to being like a best friend to somebody who would like you as a person necessarily. I guess it could, but like, no, it's, it's probably in not. It's like inhumane. And these are the guys that, that on a first or second or fifth date end up coming across like Mr. Collins in the, 2005 sent uh pride and prejudice no like girls giggle at him and he gets giggled oh. at when he enters when he remember yeah, okay. when he enters uh wedding yeah 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 uh recital uh, proposal to lizzie yeah she's actually gig she's horrified but she's sort of going back and forth between being horrified and laughing at him and it's not because lizzie's cruel she's really not but she tells him, you're the last man in the world that could make me happy. And I don't think I could make you happy. He's ridiculous. I mean, the actor who plays uh, Mr. Collins, I don't know his name, but he just does a bang up job. This is 95% of the trad guys that are out there at, I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of describe them, you know, 55% of, or whatever, 45% of them haven't ever approached a girl. And they're literally just, they're like, well, I can recite, you know, these obscure prayers from the old missile. Um, what do you think of me now? How, how do you like them apples? You know, and it's, it's inhumane. It doesn't, it gives women nothing to connect with. You'd be better off just walking around with a puppy and showing that you're kind to it. Mm -hmm. Like on, yeah. Honestly. So I know, Will, you're, you're, crunch for time but i don't even think we need to even harp on this last point too long because it's just it's a simple answer how long do i wait get married within a year propose after three months or six months or four months or seven months or and discern that like you have to sometimes discern this yourself and not have another man have to tell you when to do that you'll kind of be able to discern it me and my wife got married within like eight nine months of dating and it was great we're married we're happily married it's only gotten better since then would you guys agree with that real quick is there any specific guidelines or such like just get married within a year and just start? I think that's great. And then during that process, if you're agonizing about what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, simple rule of thumb is don't do anything together that you wouldn't do in the presence of witnesses, right? And keep it PG. It's simple as that. Don't overthink it too much. In front of your grandma. Unless your grandma's a pervert, then the rule breaks down. Like maybe she likes to watch you go too far with a girl. But if your grandma's a normal grandma, don't do anything you wouldn't do in front of her. And um, I would just say, yeah, it, it basically, you know, within, within, depending on how you got to know each other within six months, uh, whether or not this is the person for you, God crafted uh, men and women with something called complementarity, which has all these features. One of its features is when men and women get to know each other extra fast and can develop trust faster than two men who are going to be friends can. And um, then once you do, I would just say, I mean, we could do a whole show on this. It, it might bear some extra import for, for Nick. Now he might be able to speak to it in an extra interesting way. But um, once you get engaged, keep that really short, do a small wedding uh, big weddings are, are fake and gay and they're on the way out. They're, they're actually the, the hallmark trademark, whatever watermark of the divorce culture. They, they really came to home to roost in the nineties when divorce rates were at their highest. 
Uh, and you know, you you probably people have to be realistic about the fact that they're probably going to be up against whether it's a trad family or trad families involved or not. You're probably going to be up against in at least seventy, probably eighty five percent of the cases, up against the the parents. So um, be ready to, you know, this is all about confidence. Be ready to make this decision on your own, most important decision of your life, and then go it on your own. Because um, there's no guarantee in this feminist day, even most trad fathers are feminist when it comes down to it. They're going to be mad if you guys ducked out of college in year one or year two or year three. So be ready to go it alone. You found what you came there to find. That's all you need, your pearl of great price. And uh, be ready to go it alone, be ready to do a small wedding and to just start your lives together within that first year. It's great when advice. You know, you know. Yeah, the just because I've been doing research on this uh, out of frustration, I was like, who came up with the six-month waiting period, the, the marriage prep period? in the church. Like when did that come on the scene? Like that, I was like, that cannot have been pre 1962. Turns out it was 1970 Maricopa County in Arizona in an F this is all it was in an effort to stave off the increasing divorce rates. Maricopa County imposed a six month marriage preparation period for their newly engaged couples. And then somehow I haven't figured out the chain of custody. It just became universally adopted by the Catholic church. So I don't know. I'll, I'll spare the audience my own grievances on that, but that six months, like spend, spend six months getting to know the person. And then when you know, um, get married or uh, get engaged and see if you can't get some kind of dispensation, find a trad priest, uh, who will respect canon law. Um, Tim talked about this in his uh, Trent Horn show that the Catechism of Trent does not say that you need parents uh, blessing. Aquinas says this. Pope Pius XIII says this. Um, if you guys are of sufficient virtue and you're not doing something shady or untoward because of, of uh, manipulation, then just get married as soon as you can. And <clears throat> go ahead, Will. I was going to say one last thing I think a lot of guys overlook is that for some people, step one in becoming better with women is actually just to make more male friends, work on your basic social skills with other men, because that's a lot easier. And once a girl sees that you are a socially valued person and other people enjoy time with you, that's proof of your character people enjoy being with you she sees that and that gives you a kind of confidence as well which is going to make you more attractive too so if you're someone who just spends the whole time on twitter not talking to people doesn't have any friends rather than going straight to cold approach with women just walk up to a guy after mass at church and try and make friends with him like it's a lot more forgiving to do that to begin with try and find five guys who will be your friend and then once you've done that then you can start trying to make connections with girls. I think some people really need to start at that level. Try to get five guys' <laughs> numbers. <to practice> on <laughs> guys. And if you just walk up to him, like, point. hey, I don't want to. I don't want to bother you here. I was just on my way out the door, but you're really handsome, and I was just going to ask you, can I have your phone number? <laughs> That's it. I noticed you from across the room, and I noticed you before. You're breathtaking. Wanna no, but friends? it's true. Great like get punched. What? If you, yeah, great cap. No, if you, if you are, um, if five guys who you admire and wish, you know, wish you could be like in, in, you know, a couple of different ways, find you enjoyable to be around. That's probably a really good sign. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and you can take note as well of how they interact with each other. Like you'll never see a guy who's super confident introduce himself as like oh i'm an alpha like people don't talk like that there's this whole lingo online about men and status and all the rest of it that never gets talked about among people who are actually secure in themselves and relaxed and that 
relaxation, security, confidence. That's what you're going to need for women to feel good around you. So be around that in other men. Become a man that a man that other men respect and you will earn her respect. It's pretty quick, pretty quick and easy way to say that. It's very true. So I think this probably deserves a part two, but uh, in closing too, um, what's licit? Uh, don't have sex. If touching hands or kissing leads you to, thank you, Tim, morose delectation, ruminating on sin, don't do it, but it's fine. Don't make out with her, marry her, marry her bro within a year. And uh, that's it. God bless you guys. It's been a good one. Thanks, Mike. God bless you. God bless, guys.